Welcome to the McGregor Video Guide to Installing Access Gates. In this video, we depict the installation of a 3 foot wide personal access gate. Driveway gates, although similar, will have different parts and steps may vary, so be sure to follow the written instructions provided with your gate. When you order a gate, all of your materials will come conveniently packaged together in one bundle. In addition to your materials, you will need several tools to complete your job. These tools are an electric drill with a Phillips head bit and a 5 16 inch drill bit, some scotch tape, a pair of wire cutters, a tape measure, an adjustable wrench, and a hammer. You will also be setting the gate frame into cement footings. So see our cement footing video and review what you will need. First, gather the posts which will make up your door. These are the thinner 1 and 3 8 inch diameter posts. Lay them out in the shape of your door, making sure that the slightly shorter post is placed in the middle. Now take your four small elbows and slide the pipes in at the corners as deep as they will go. Be certain to have the side of the elbow with the dimples facing upwards. Then, fit your electric drill with a Phillips head bit. Use it to drive in the self-tapping screws in all four dimples on all four of your elbows. Next, measure your posts and place a piece of tape at their halfway points. This is where you will attach your crossbar. Lay your side post on top of one of the clamps. Stick one of your carriage bolts upwards through the hole in the clamp. Place your crossbar on top of the clamp next to the bolt, and place another clamp on top of it. Use a washer and nut to squeeze the clamp down securely. You will need an adjustable wrench and should make the nut as tight as possible. When secured, attach the second clamp to the other side of the crossbar. Grab your corner tension wires and hook them into the holes in the elbows which you want to be at the top of the fence. Unscrew the turnbuckle until it is as long as it can get. String the monofilament cable through the U-bolt, then through the hole in the opposite elbow and back through the U-bolt. Pull tight and use your wrench to secure. Repeat this process with the second wire, and then tighten both turnbuckles evenly so that the door maintains a rectangular shape. Cut the extra monofilament line, and you should have a door with a tight X running over it. Now select a piece of fencing you want to cover your door. We happen to have a piece of fencing which nicely fit our door, However, you may want to measure your door and then cut out the appropriate size. Give yourself some extra fencing to play with because it is easy to trim off. However, it will not attach properly if you come up short. When you have your fencing in place, fetch your zip ties. Attach zip ties to every 6 to 8 inches around the perimeter of your door. If you're using polypropylene, this is about every four squares. And if you're using metal hex, it's about every seven hexes. Make sure you're not twisting the fencing as you attach it, and that all your squares or hexes line up in a straight row. Once it is all attached, use a pair of wire cutters to snip the extra fencing. If you're using standard grade polypropylene, scissors will do the job much faster. Now snip the tails off of the zip ties. Measure 18 inches from the top and bottom of your fence and mark these spots for your female hinges. Snap on a hinge, making sure that the female bit is on the outside of the door. Run a carriage bolt upwards through its holes and use a washer and nut to secure it. Use your adjustable wrench to tighten it as much as possible. 
On the other side, measure 18 inches from the top and bottom. Mark these spots for your latches. Lay the post atop one of the U-shaped pieces and run a carriage bolt up through each of the holes. Lay the latch itself in place and then put another U-shaped piece on top. Use washers and nuts to secure it. Don't tighten the nut on top of the latch too tightly or the latch will not be able to move. With that, your door is complete and you are ready to move on to your frame. Lay out your larger 1 and 5 8 inch posts and put them in your elbows. Be sure that the top bar is flush with the end of the elbow and is not blocked by the other post. Equip your drill with a 5 16 inch drill bit and drill through the holes in the corner braces. Flip the elbow over and drill through the holes on the other side as well. Put the bolts through the holes you have just drilled. Sometimes it is a tight fit and may require using a hammer to get the bolts through. Secure them using a washer and nut. Tighten the nut as much as you can with your adjustable wrench. Take the frame and lay it down at the planned location of your gate. Use the top bar as a guide and put stakes into the ground where your posts will stand. Slide your male hinges onto the side of the frame you want the gate to swing from. Slide the first one on facing downwards and the second one on facing upwards. Tighten both just enough so that they do not slide down. Use your post hole digger to dig a hole underneath each of the stakes you have put into the ground. These holes are going to be turned into cement footings. If you are not sure how to do this, then refer to our video titled Installing Cement Footings. Your hole should have a diameter of one foot. It should have a depth of two feet or however deep it takes to get below the frost line. Lower your frame into the holes and have someone assist you in creating your cement footings. With your frame sturdily in place, hold up your door to judge where you want your male hinges to go. Tighten the bottom one fully and turn the top one to the side 90 degrees. Place your gate so that it is fully resting on the bottom male hinge. Turn back the top hinge and lock it into place. Now tighten the top hinge so that the door is fully secured. Congratulations! Your gate is now standing strong and securely and is ready for use. We hope you have found our video guide useful and we wish you the best of luck with your gardens and orchards.